lab guy here. Today's subject is a kit television camera manufactured by ATV Research in about 1970. ATV Research made television camera kits in the 1960s. It was founded by Mel Shadbolt. He was concerned that there wasn't a supply of parts for building your own closed circuit TV cameras. So the first product that Mel offered for sale was a deflection yoke kit for Viticon tubes. This really helped a lot of amateurs build their first cameras. His first camera kit was an all vacuum tube design and this is the let's call it the second camera kit and I have to admit I do not have a lot of information on the early days of ATV research. I have three yeah, I call it two and a half of these in my collection. Uh, two in complete condition and one that's going to be a parts donor and a uh, autopsy cadaver. But here we see the basic unit. It's an aluminum box. 10 inches by six and a quarter inches and three inches thick. This is looking inside the top of the kit. You can see the hand assembled deflection yoke and beneath it a large circuit board that fills the box. The circuitry of this camera is very simple. I'll show you the full schematic of that right now. Everything needed to power the tube and to deflect the beam is on this board and nothing more. It is an extremely simple design. This is not the original lens on the camera. This one is. This is a 1960s cinematography lens for a 16 millimeter television camera. The f-stop on this lens is 2.7. That is f 2.7. This is not a very strong light gathering lens. The lens I have on here right now is an f 1.8. It uh, is approximately able to gather twice as much light as the as the cine lens. Here's a look at the output sync pulses. This is a horizontal sync. The amplitude is huge. We're looking at it at one volt per division and we've got sync that's at least two volts peak to peak. It's a monstrous output signal. Here's a look at the vertical sync interval. These cameras are extremely basic. They make no major distinction between blanking and sync. So the camera basically goes from active video to a very large negative going sync pulse that is the entire blanking interval. Somebody built this camera in the early 1970s. It probably sat in a closet, then an attic, then a garage, then a yard sale. Then it came up on eBay and I bought it. It's been in my storage locker for over 10 years. I brought it home, powered it up, twisted the knobs a bit, messed with it. It was kind of iffy, thumped it a couple of times, and boom, it started making a picture. Now the black band you see in there is a burn in the Viticon tube that has been there from day one. I remember turning this camera on about 12, 13, 14 years ago when I bought it. And it made a picture then and the burn was there also. But you see Spud looks good. Spud is looking good. So this is the ATV X-T1A Viticon television camera kit as seen in 2017 at Lab Guys World. Let's look closer at a Viticon tube. This is a one inch Viticon tube typical of the type used in this camera and others. This one is particularly old and we can tell by the style of the target ring 
at the front and this very brown selenium color of the target. Some are black, some are blue, they, they all look slightly different depending on the chemistry. Manufacturers all use different processes, but they're all Viticon tubes. Inside the tube is the electron gun. The first element being a grid cup and then a second anode, a focus electrode and the second anode again all the way out to the front a mesh on the end of the anode and the photo target material itself which is connected to the outside world by this metal ring. All of the necessary support is contained within the deflection yoke. The big coil is a magnetic focusing coil. I don't know the field strength involved. And within that are two pairs of deflection coils that work pretty much like a television set and all the other cameras I've shown you to this date. When the kit is assembled, it looks pretty sharp. Let's look at the back side. The back side controls are pretty basic. You have the beam control, which adjusts bias on grid 1 in the Viticon and controls the intensity of the electron beam. The second control sets the target voltage at the front of the tube. This is the target. And the final control is the voltage of the focusing electrode inside the tube. The tube uses a combination of magnetic and electrostatic focus. The magnetic focus coil, and that's in finger quotes, is actually a collimating field that makes the electron beam travel in a relatively parallel straight lines to the face of the tube. This camera also has an RF modulator which can be selected and brought out on this homemade jack. I believe that it was originally switchable so that both video and RF could come from the main jack this fellow wanted to monitor this camera on RF and have video output at the same time. Very good. I wonder if he used it with a Carter Vision video tape recorder. Or ham radio perhaps. Perhaps it was for amateur television. That's what ATV stands for. ATV research. Amateur television research. Not all-terrain vehicle.